Universal Orlando Resort features a wide range of accommodations and today we take a look into the secrets behind the fusion of comfort, convenience and theming. Why Universal Orlando hotels are actually well designed. Prepare to be amazed and inspired as we reveal which hotel is the best for you. But Universal Orlando did not start with a hotel. In fact, in 1990 there were no hotels, just a massive parking lot. Universal did have plans to expand with a second park, creating Universal City, Florida. The original plans included a water feature designed to meander around the themed hotels. One of these hotels would be an Egyptian themed one, showcasing tree towers and an obelisk. We can also see an island resort and another hotel. There were also plans for a massive golf course. But over time these plans would change, the Egyptian hotel actually remained for quite a while, however it never got built. In 1999 Universal welcomed its first hotel, Lois Portofino Bay. This hotel recreates the picturesque Italian city almost perfectly. Its architectural vision tries to emulate a small Italian fishing village with its pastel color facades and general layout, with the buildings giving a sense that this hotel is very much alive. This hotel also takes advantage of the classic technique trompe l'oeil, which consists of painting architectural details with optical illusions, making these details feel 3D. This technique was quite common in actual Portofino, Italy. So while some might call this cheap or fake, keep in mind this is authentic. When guests take a water taxi to this hotel, they will be amazed with details reminiscent of the Italian Riviera like the fishing boats. Lois Portofino Bay is Universal's ultimate luxury experience, as so the program needs to reflect that. From the elegant Bisse Ristorante to the classic Mamadella's Ristorante, featuring great details in wood. The family style Trattoria del Porto combined elements of fishing with these painted pillars, and South Market Deli offers a quick meal. There's also the Thirsty Fish, the hotel's lounge. Additionally, the resort also features a gelataria and a Starbucks. All Universal hotels feature Starbucks. So, overall, this hotel has a very extensive dining program. Portofino Bay features three incredible pools. The hotel also tries to recreate that almost medieval urban planning with tight streets and alleyways. The landscaping around the hotel creates a countryside-like atmosphere with the trees and the water feature. The trees around the hotel create a path to great vistas. However, there are parts of this hotel that lack in theming and storytelling, that being the rooms. The interiors lack an extra touch of luxury for the price point and they deviate from the classic Riviera style, looking more like generic resort rooms. While they are spacious, they lack a bit of that Italian Riviera touch. This is hurting the resort as it has failed to maintain its relevance as newer, more luxurious hotels emerge, Portofino lags behind. But I think we can all take inspiration from the creative success of this hotel. The layout of Universal's hotels is actually quite simple. The two main parts are located in a central hub with city walk, and to get to the hotels you have this beautifully landscaped promenade that follows the water. This also allows for easy access with the water taxis. Unfortunately, Cabana Bay is not connected directly with the water feature, resulting in a less friendly pedestrian footbridge. And for Aventura Hotel, you can actually walk through Sapphire Falls lobby to get to the water. The other Universal hotels are located outside and you have to take a bus. Next up is Hard Rock. Designed by ACI Architects, the exterior of this hotel is just fantastic. Taking cues from Spanish colonial revival architecture, this hotel feels like a classic California hotel, with cues taken from missions around the state. Notice the various domes that would adorn a church, or the use of terracotta roof tiles, creating a dynamic roof. The pools even reflect this, and also feature music underwater. The hotel even features fake balconies. This hotel also has a lot of amenities, from the elegant palm restaurant to the casual, the kitchen. The hotel lounge is Velvet Lounge. There's also a Mac e Bolios marketplace for a quick meal. The hotel also has easy access to the park at a short walk or a water taxi. While I find the exterior of Hard Rock to be quite beautiful, 
honestly the interior is like from the moment guests step foot out to the lobby they are bombarded with a bunch of rock memorabilia reminiscent of the hard rock cafe and the loud rock music playing through the hotel this overwhelming sensory experience is almost kittish the interiors feel disjointed in a lack of cohesion with the exterior the furniture for instance is from a different time altogether it's like they were borrowed from a different hotel during a renovation i would not have a problem with kittish architecture after all i'm a big fan of robert venturi if the hotel were designed to look like a las vegas hotel or a giant guitar however the beautiful exterior creates an expectation that would not be met what if the interior was like that spanish colonial building and the rock theming was just sheer coincidence the rooms of the hotel also reflect that rock theming as well. Overall, you should appreciate the creative success of the exterior of the hotel despite the interior. And if you are a big fan of rock and roll, maybe this is the hotel for you. Next up is Royal Pacific Resort. Originally envisioned as an Egyptian themed hotel, this resort now features an elegant lobby designed by FK architects, reminiscent of the Pacific Islands, featuring a massive fountain with elephants. The lobby is inspired by travel to this great island. I appreciate how the hotel combines elements from different countries, especially the wood details throughout. Additionally, new renovations have created a bland contemporary aesthetic that creates an odd contrast. The rooms are equally odd, featuring very questionable designs. The exterior with South Seas motifs and the stone base looks okay, however it lacks that extra architecture detail. Instead of evoking the charm of Polynesia or Indonesia, it feels like a generic and uninspired hotel that could be found anywhere in the United States. However, I personally quite like this hotel. Why? because of the fantastic landscape from a plane that immediately notifies you of what this hotel is about to the great mix of foliage and viewpoints. Immediately after you enter the Port Cocher, there is this creek giving you a sense of immersion onto the tropic environment, despite being right next to an interstate intersection. In different parts of the hotel you'll notice these large windows that give fantastic views of the resort, it's like a painting, with the foliage creating a nice balance in the landscaping. The hotel evokes the tranquility of the South Seas paradise. I also enjoy its extensive program, featuring a convention center that is actually well designed with full stone elements that give a sense of height to the many dining options like the South Island dining room where you can enjoy a nice theming to Jake's American bar which is quite fun. The newer Orchard Court sushi bar that has a more contemporary design aesthetic, there is also a grab and go option with great views. This hotel has some great amenities and nice spaces, it just lacks cohesion. Overall, I like the small details of this hotel, especially the ones done in wood and some parts do feel authentic. Next up is the vibrant Sapphire Falls. Taking cues from the Caribbean and specifically the Dutch West Indies, this hotel is fantastic. First off is the grandiose lobby, its impressive scale is just breathtaking and the best part well the view you get from these large windows. The lobby features the new Dutch trading company, a grab and go style service with nice tile work, there is also a sports bar, strong water tavern. The hotel also features a beautiful colonial mill structure with stonework and a spiral staircase, it creates an immersive experience. Downstairs you'll find the hotel's signature restaurant, Amistissa Cookhouse, but the best part is the waterfall. It takes advantage of the topography and creates a spectacle in landscaping. The way the fall can also be experienced from the elevated bridge is just fantastic. The pool of this hotel is also mega impressive, not only in its design and scale, but also in its theming. The incredible design was all thanks to DTG Design. Next up is Aventura Hotel. Surprisingly, Aventura Hotel is not directly themed like the other hotels on property. Rather, it talks more about Latin American modernist architecture and was designed by Showman and Associates. This hotel is a great masterclass onto modernism. The hotel can be accessed by foot from Sapphire. As you approach the hotel, you notice the large canopy that works like a port cocher. Also, notice the pilotis. This pillar lead to an open first floor. Le Corbusier was quite fond of this concept of pilotis. 
As we enter the hotel, you'll notice the four concrete columns and an open floor pan. Also, take note of the pillars or columns. They are not in the facade, rather inside the building. This was to allow a clean facade outside, quite common in modernist architecture. On this hotel, it also allows for a connection to the pool. The shape of the building, which is reminiscent of a fidget spinner, looks like the Copan building in Sao Paulo. Aventura is more geared towards adults in its design. This hotel features a modest food court, urban pantry and a large gift shop on the lobby for your universal needs. On the top, there is Bar 17 Bistro with fantastic views. This hotel is great. The rooms of this hotel are also quite modern. However, it lacks a bit of character. I would like the names of the restaurant to be more Latin American inspired, maybe Sao Paulo Food Market or Santiago 17 Bistro. Nothing too childish, but something that fits with the architecture. Now let's move to what some call the best universal hotel, Cabana Bay. Designed also by Schumann, Cabana Bay sits on the site that was supposed to be a golf course that never happened. This resort is massive, but it can be divided onto four parts. The motel-style rooms, the mega-sized lobby, the other pool rooms, and the two Vulcano Bay towers. According to the architects, quote, the thing design evokes the glamour, optimism and playfulness of America at mid-century. Reminiscent without being retro, the design was carefully considered to create clean lines and elegant, reasonable spaces. It feels wholly new." End quote. This hotel takes cues from the 50s and 60s. The lobby features similar design to Aventura with the same modernist architectural elements. Notice the columns again. But this hotel is more fun. It also takes advantage of graphical design from that time period. This hotel is function follows fun. One side features motel style rooms with weather exposed walkways. The lobby features a huge program even featuring a bowl alley, Galaxy Bowl restaurant. There is also a large food court, Bay Liner Diner and also the lounge, Swizzle Lounge. One downside is that there is no water taxi, but you can still walk. The pools are huge and even feature a lazy river. The Vulcano Bay Towers stand out with incredible views to the water park. The layout of this hotel is also genius, opening up towards the water park. This allows for great landscaping. The fantastic design of this hotel was all possible thanks to Schumann's incredible knowledge of mid-century modern architecture, especially in Miami. The success of this hotel combines value pricing with immersion. Next up is Endless Summer Resort, divided into Surfside, the smaller one, and Dockside. These hotels replace the historic Wet n Wild Water Park. Offering Universal's most affordable accommodations, these hotels combine the fun of the beach with great interior design. The exterior features a large mural and bright colors. We'll start with Surfside, the smaller one. This hotel features one surfboard-shaped pool, Beach Break Cafe, again, it takes cues from surfing. And just like all Universal hotels, there's a Starbucks. Dockside is bigger, featuring two pools, and PRH, which is a full court with great theme. There is also a lounge, Sunset Lounge. The rooms here are similar on both sides, with some minor decorational differences. These hotels feature fantastic interior and graphical design. Their logo is quite cool looking. One major criticism is the location. Endless Summer is located next to International Drive and not near the rest of Universal Orlando. You can only go to the parks via bus, there is no water taxi. Also the exterior design is lacking, but for a value hotel it's ok. Then comes Universal's newest hotels for the opening of Universal's brand new park Epic Universe located south of the rest of Universal Orlando near the Orange County Convention Center and accessible via bus or car. Three new hotels will call this complex home Universal, Terra Luna and Stella Nova. These hotels have an out of this world theme with pod-like windows and a colorful tile mural. Both hotels will offer quick service restaurants, coffee bar and grab and go and also a lounge bar. The rooms are also similar, what changes is color and the minor decorational theming. But the centerpiece of Epic Universe will be Helios Grand Hotel, which will be inside the park, providing guests with an incredible view of Epic Universe. So, we took a look at how Universal innovated with great hotel design. Universal offers a mix of great amenities like early park admission combined with fantastic theme. Universal excels at selling a great, affordable vacation in a well-designed environment. 
their hotels are not managed by Universal but rather Lois. One of the greatest architectural achievements of Universal Orlando hotels is how they blend thematic immersion and functionality, sharing a commitment to great design, thematic immersion and attention to detail. This is why Universal hotels are incredibly well designed.